Hey there again YouTube, it's RJ in the workshop. Just wanted to talk to you real quick. I've got some aluminum uh, vent vents that I need to paint. And I wanted to bring you a few tricks, a few things that I've found that worked well. These are the same, these are actually uh, soffit vents uh, for the new workshop. And these are the same vents, uh, I think I got them from Home Depot. They're super lightweight, they're aluminum, instead of typically they'll be like galvanized steel or something like that. I put these on the house five years ago now. I used this process to paint them and uh, the finish looks just like the day I started. So I just want to go over, because it is aluminum, it's a little bit different. Just a couple of quick things that I did. Hopefully it can help you out at some point in time. First thing I did was cleaning. Uh, I used just some, because these are such an intricate shape, I didn't want to try to wipe them down with something. So I just took a bottle of uh, alcohol denatured alcohol, just gave them a little bit of a rinse off, took a blow gun, blew over them to dry off, and that seemed to uh, take up any oils or anything that were on there with no problems. Uh, this style, I like these little squirt bottles for trying to use uh, alcohol or acetone. The one thing, and you can see there's a little piece of red tape on here, at one time that said denatured alcohol. With both the alcohol and the acetone, the product actually wears that off fairly quickly. If you're going to have something, if you're going to have something that's a hazardous material, put it in a bottle. If you put it in a different bottle, try to label it. Uh, I know which one's acetone. I know which one's denatured alcohol. But you know, if somebody else walks in here, they don't. So I haven't found a good label for this yet. I'm still working on that. But so uh, rinse it off some alcohol, blow it off dry. Worked well. Uh, I've got them all laid out here. Here's the real product. Uh, this is Rust-Oleum. It's their professional series. And this is aluminum primer. So, I don't know. It works good. I've used it that one time. Like I say, this is just lightweight. I would assume this is the same, same thing that would work good on oh, a lot of screen doors, lightweight uh, trim, things like that is all aluminum. Uh, this professional series has a different nozzle on it. It's more expensive. I don't don't quote me on prices, but a uh, regular can of Rust Oleum these days is 350 something like that. These are 650 maybe. I, 650 seven dollars. So it costs a little bit more, but this nozzle you can spray in any orientation, even upside down. And think of it as a high volume, low pressure gun. Uh, it puts out a lot of product in a very uh, specific area so you don't get a lot of uh, spray around so you put a lot more product onto the part that you're doing so uh, this stuff is pretty nice I don't buy it for everything but on certain jobs it works out real well and then I've got the corresponding uh, this one's charcoal gray or dark machine gray I take that back uh, that's the color same product line uh, you can use it on multiple different things. I don't know, I'm assuming this aluminum probably has some different etching, more of like an etching primer. Um, so these things have worked really well for me. This, uh, I'll get the square footage and, or square inches or whatever and tell you what the coverage is uh, for one can, you know, what I actually found. I believe uh, the, <laughs> another pet peeve of mine, read the directions. I don't read directions necessarily when I'm assembling things, things like that, but when you're using someone else's product, they spend a lot of time trying to figure this stuff out. Uh, they suggest doing two coats. There is a time in between. I don't have my reading glasses, so I'm not telling you exactly what, they, what it is, but basically you do two light coats and you do them within a few minutes of each other. That way, as it's uh, flashing off, you're putting that next coat on and they're, they're bonding together. So, by reading the directions, it's gonna tell you, basically you want to spray this, then recoat it fairly quickly while it's still off-gassing, it's still soft. And then same thing with the top coat. You can top coat this almost immediately. Uh, let it set up for, I believe, 30 minutes and then recoat it. If you don't do that, you have to wait 48 hours. You have to let it completely off gas, completely dry solid, and then you can top coat. So you either can do it right away or you gotta wait quite some time and then do it. If you do it in between, you just don't know what the results are gonna be. So yeah, this product works really well. One other tip, warm the cans up. Uh, 
if you're out in the shop and it's 50 degrees, you can still paint this stuff. But like these two cans, I just had them sitting outside in the cab of the truck. It's a nice sunny day. It was probably 85, 90 degrees in the cab of the truck. Let them sit in there for an hour. So these cans are nice and warm. It bumps the pressure up in the can a little bit better, more, so you get a little bit uh, better spray. And with the product being warm, it seems to atomize nicer. So warm cans when you're doing spray painting helps out quite a bit. Uh, last thing, just uh, another pet peeve of mine. I don't want to be the safety idiot, but I see a lot of people using just those little dust mats or something like that when they're spray painting. That essentially does nothing for you. It stops the particulates, I guess it does a little bit, it stops the particulates from going into the lung, your lungs. Um, but the organic vapors, which is that really nasty smell, it doesn't do a thing for you. Uh, this is an MSA respirator, there's a ton of different companies that make respirators. The respirator itself, so if you pick, pull the canisters off, this main body is like eight bucks. I mean it's next to nothing, You're, it's disposable practically. Uh, I've had this one for a while and then you can get uh, particulate filters, uh, you can get all sorts of filters. These ones are organic vapor. They're kind of expensive comparatively. I think they're about 25 bucks a piece, but they last a fair amount of time. Uh, when I'm painting with this, I smell no paint odor at all. I mean, I can be in here in a cloud of dust from the spray paint and I don't have any notion that I've been painting. So get yourself some organic vapor canisters. It's worth every penny. Uh, it's your lungs. You only got one set. Um, there's a lot of nasty stuff out there. So just use them. So I'm just going to throw this on. I'm going to show you real quick. I'm not going to show you me painting this whole thing necessarily, but you can see how well this stuff covers. Like I say, it's pretty thick, thick coverage. That's it for the talking for a bit. All right, so I got a second coat on here, and I'm ready for the top coat. A uh, couple tips. One, uh, when you are spraying these things, like I said, I read the instructions. It says you have to recoat within one hour. It doesn't tell you how short. Um, so I went about, and it said dries to touch about 15 to 20 minutes. So I let it sit for about 15 minutes. Uh, the one thing that I'd suggest is, is either you know everybody's got a smell smartphone. Uh, check the actual time or set a timer. I, over the years, forever, have been like, oh, I'll come back in 15 minutes and I don't remember, you know, I don't pay attention, I don't look to see what time it is. So, uh, you know, out of the corner of your eye, make sure you really check my clock's over there. You know, when I start spraying, I know when it is. Just a good practice, um, not a big deal. This can I just grabbed out of the truck, like I said, it's probably 90 degrees. Uh, when I pulled it out of the house today, which, you know, is 65 degrees, the little marble that's inside was real sluggish when you were rattling it around. Um, you know, it was working, but it was sluggish. Now it's nice and warm. It's just bouncing around there real good. So, uh, like I say, warm is really good. So, um, the only other thing, just coverage. So, one can of aluminum primer. Uh, this is essentially 15 square feet, three foot by five foot. So I'm getting essentially full coverage. Uh, the first pass was a pretty light primer. And then the second one was pretty heavy primer on it. So essentially I got 30 square feet out of one can. So just to give you a rough estimate. So time to have at it. All right, there we go. We've got the top coat all done. Uh, a couple things that I noticed. One, uh, these cans you can use at any spray angle, upside down, anything like that. And that is true, I have used them that way. The one thing I did notice, however, is when you get down to about a third of the can, you no longer have as much angle that you can use. You, you gotta come back to fairly standard spray angle, so. Um, just a, one thing to know, it's, uh, if you want to be upside down the whole time, it's not going to get you the full can. Um, coverage on the top coat, 
I ended up using two full cans and I got three coats of top coat on here. So 45 square feet out of two cans. So essentially 22 and a half square feet of can out of the uh, gray. So a little bit less. I think the first coat of primer was fairly thin, which was fine. That worked well. So uh, 30 square feet with this, 22 and a half for the top coat. Um, one thing I did go back and look at some of the footage and the one thing I did notice was the lack of overspray. You don't see that big plume of uh, product coming up and off. This stuff, like I said, drops it down onto the surface pretty well. So, like I say, I don't use this professional series for everything, but there are some things where it really does work well. Um, so, just a quick recap, like I say, these are light aluminum things, so I did use the aluminum primer. Uh, I've used it in the past. It's been successful for five years now out in the weather, so I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I'm looking at my list. Um, professional series so make sure your stuff's clean um, like I say I just used some alcohol because this was new just getting any oils dust anything off warm up spray paint warm spray paint is good spray paint uh, I've used warm water before microwave a little dish set the can in there for a little bit just to warm it up to 90 degrees something like that works pretty good uh, timing you either need to you know, when you start, you either need to go all the way through, you know, and, and do all of it right away, or you're going to have to let it sit fully dry, fully cure, completely off gas, and then spray it. So, uh, this was a total of five coats between two primer and three top coat. 15 to 20 minutes in between, like I say, I made a note of the time on the clock, so I wasn't just guessing like I used to do. Uh, that helps out quite a bit. And last thing respirator those little paper things that you put on your face are for dust this is not dust this is chemicals so organic vapor it's probably going to cost you 30 35 bucks for organic vapor and a mask it's worth every penny so um that's all i got on this one kind of a simple project but i thought there were some interesting things in here so thanks for coming into the workshop with me if you would please if you enjoyed this video hit the like button if you don't Hit the dislike button, but please, if you dislike it, let me know why. So throw a comment in if you would, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again, and thanks for coming to RJ's workshop.